Hi everyone, it's Tim here. So the other day I realized that we've got a bit of a problem. So we've got a nice big solar array, as you know, if you've been watching the channel, and we generate plenty of energy during the summer months. Um, but we also have uh, electric heating. We have an air-to-air -air heat pump system which uh, provides our heating during the winter. Now, although it's very efficient, it does consume a fair bit of energy. And I calculated um, on balance throughout the year, we actually will consume a little bit more than we generate in total. Um, and ideally, I'd want to close that gap so that we're generating about the same amount as we're consuming throughout the year. So I'm going to show you the calculation that I've done and show you how much we're missing, what our deficit is, and a few thoughts that I've had on how I'm going to address that, that deficit. So in terms of we could either increase the amount that we generate um, or we could uh, reduce the amount that we consume. So I'll, uh, I'll explain the thoughts that I've been having uh, along those lines and this is going to form the, the basis of a, a series of videos that are going to come up in the next few weeks where I tackle each of those options one by one and hopefully uh, by the end of that uh, little mini series of videos I'll have come to a good conclusion and uh, hopefully you'll agree with my conclusion uh, and yeah maybe you'll find that interesting and useful. So without further ado let's uh, show you the calculation. Okay, so this is the little energy budget workbook that I've um, built in G Sheets. It's very simple. All I've done is I've added some estimates of our um, daily uh, base load use, and I've added our hot water use here. Um, the heating is done annually, so all of these green cells are ones that um, I can change basically the rest of calculations. And I've um, calculated based on uh, the modeling I did last year uh, how much in total we're likely to use in terms of kilowatt hours. Uh, for our heating during the winter. Now this obviously is going to vary from year to year but um, 2700 kilowatt hours is approximately the average um, in the long run. So if you ran the heating system, the same heating system over multiple years the average would be uh, would be this value here. Um, our EV, um, this is a sort of reasonable estimate of what we typically will need to keep the car topped up. Um, three kilowatt hours per day, so roughly uh, somewhere in the region of 90 to 100 kilowatt hours uh, per month, um, which comes to you know just about 1100 kilowatt hours a year. So we're, we're pretty low users of, of the EV. Um, but uh, you know that's still a reasonably high uh, proportion of our consumption, so um, that needs to be included, obviously. So that gives us a, a grand total of about 23 and a half kilowatt hours per day, 8,540 kilowatt hours during the course of the year. So um, our solar panel array is um, it's uh, 6.8 uh, kilowatt peak, split east and west, 3.4 kilowatts on each side. And um, I've estimated using the PVGIS uh, tool online, which you can uh, you can find uh, easily enough if you do a, a little Google search. And um, I put all the details of our array in, and that gave me an estimate of about 5,164 kilowatt hours for the year. And obviously that will be higher or lower, depending on, on the sort of weather that you experience during the year. But um, that's a, a decent average um, and a good place to start. And we have also purchased uh, 959 kilowatt hours uh, of Ripple Energy. Um, that's actually not built yet. This is the, the new solar farm that they're building. Um, and obviously it's not generating yet. So this is the value that we'll be getting at some point in the future. So that gives us a grand total of 6,123 kilowatt hours generated. Now you can see that that is less than the 8,540 kilowatt hours that we would consume throughout the year. And you can see I've just done a, a very simple calculation here to show you what the difference is. And our deficit comes to about 9.2 kilowatt hours per day. So if I want to be balanced across the year, uh, I would want to bring this down to zero. Uh, and as far as I can tell, there's only two ways really that I can go about doing that. And the first is to reduce our uh, actual consumption value. And that means bringing down one of these or uh, one or more of these values here. Now, I think realistically, our base load is not really going to change much from eight kilowatt hours. That's already, you know, on the low end, really, for, for a house this size and, you know, our lifestyle. I might be able to bring that down to, well, let's say 7.5, maybe, maybe seven if we're lucky. Um, and obviously, that's helped a little bit. We're, we're now down to 2,050 kilowatt hours. Um, a day, uh, sorry, over the year. The EV, realistically, that's not going to change. If anything, that's going to go up um, because at the moment we have one petrol car, which is my car, and one EV, which is Kat's car. Ideally, I'd love to uh, replace my car with an EV as well, or maybe if we're really lucky, we'll be able to go down to a one-car family at some point in the future. But for the foreseeable future, I don't think we're going to be able to achieve that. So 
I'm going to leave that as three kilowatt hours per day for now. But in the future, right, we could conceivably go up to maybe five kilowatt hours. And that's actually not going to, that's going to make the situation worse, in fact. Um, but let's say for now, let's leave that at three. Let's leave the base load at, at eight kilowatt hours because I don't think there's realistically much we can do about that. But the one thing I do think we can change is the hot water. Now, at the moment, we're using an immersion heater in our hot water cylinder, and I'm heating the hot water uh, on a timer overnight. And um, well, during the winter, we're, we're going to be diverting a little bit uh, using the eddy when there's a bit of excess solar, but realistically, that's going to be pretty small. Um, so, you know. All of that is is basically uh, consumption that goes straight into the uh, into the hot water tank at 100% efficiency, and there's nothing we can do about regardless of where that comes from, whether it's excess solar or um, you know cheap overnight uh, Octopus Go or uh, intelligent Octopus Go, for example. Um, that doesn't change the total amount that we're that we're consuming. That would only change uh, the the cost of of what we're consuming for that for that hot water. But there are options that would allow us to reduce. The amount um, that we could that we would need for our hot water. So I think we could get down to possibly two kilo hours a day, maybe a bit less, depending on on the options that we pick. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to in the next video I'm going to explain uh, what those hot water options might look like, and then in a future video I'm going to go into even more detail about the technology that I think is going to be the best option for us, which is, uh, well, spoilers, uh, heat pump hot water cylinders. Um, but there are other options, and I'm going to go through all of the all of the options just so you know what the full range of options are for heating your hot water electrically um, before finally uh, explaining more about hot water cylinders and why I think that's the best option for us. So let's say that this is the best we can do. We can get down to uh, two kilowatt hours for the hot water and everything else is about the same. Maybe we can reduce this a little bit, let's say 2,600. Um, if, we, you know, if we can add more insulation, I don't think we're gonna be able to realistically change the insulation level on this house that much. But let's say we're able to get that down a, a little bit. We're still left with a deficit of uh, 1,200 kilowatt hours. So, I think regardless of how much we're able to reduce our consumption, we also do need to increase the amount of generation in order to cover uh, this deficit. Uh, so I'm going to explain in another video what our options are for increasing the amount of generation uh, that we can achieve. Uh, now I've, uh, I've looked into various options and uh, so I, I'm not going to give the game away just yet, but uh, wait for that video. That will be probably the last in the series. Hopefully you'll be interested to see what I've uh, come up with. Uh, the other option I've got, of course, is to purchase more investment in Ripple. Uh, now, that would be very nice, um, but I would prefer to try and cover that generation ourselves. Um, so that would be my, my primary choice. Um, but if I'm unable to do that, then maybe I'll end up purchasing a little bit more uh, investment in, in Ripple just to, to close that gap. So that's what my plan is. I'm going to go through these one at a time. Uh, the next video will be um, hot water he hot water heating options. Then I'm going to explain a bit more about uh, heat pump hot water cylinders. And in the final video, I'm going to explain how I think I might be able to add ex extra generation capacity to this house. Uh, and you might be surprised about the uh, the options that I've got available. And I'm not 100% sure yet what the best choice is. Um, but maybe you can give me your opinion on once you see that video. So. That's it for today. I hope you found that interesting and I'll see you in the next video.